A mysterious man is running some tests on his computer when he receives an encrypted message. Decrypting the message, an AI appears and talks to him in real time, saying that it knows about the man's work that got terminated. A file with the name Transfiguration Project appears on the computer. However, the AI has the plan to complete the mysterious man's project. Hesitant, the man asks why, to which the AI answers that it is the only thing that is powerful enough to stop what's coming, the end of the world. The scene changes to a TV interview with an astrophysicist named Michael Swafford about his new book titled In the End, There Was Light. Michael discussed in his book the gamma ray burst, or GRB. The astrophysicist believes that a GRB will be the cause of the extinction of mankind in the universe. Michael explains that a dying star causes a GRB by releasing two narrow beams of intense radiation. He then confirms that there is a dying star in the Milky Way galaxy called AWR 104. Unfortunately, Earth sits directly in the path of the beam zone. In other words, it is like someone is standing face to face with a barrel of a gun. Then, a computer screen is shown, wherein DNA of different people are examined until they find a perfect match for a test subject. Afterward, a man named Joseph Stedman, also known as Joe, watches on TV a recorded video of his pregnant wife Heather and his daughter named Zoe. Joe and Heather talk about the possible name of their upcoming baby. Joe suggests that they should name the baby Rhea, which means ray of light. The Stedmans seem to be a happy family in the video. Contrary to the current miserable state of Joe at the moment, however, unknown to Joe, he is being monitored through a hidden camera in his lampshade. Joe is the one chosen for the Transfiguration Project. It turns out that he is being monitored everywhere, at all times, by the mysterious man from earlier who turns out to be a mad scientist. Upon observation, it is shown that Joe is undergoing therapy for depression, suicidal tendencies, and anger management issues. In addition, Joe's daughters are also being monitored by the mad scientist. It is then revealed that Joe left his family after Heather passed away. This results in Zoe carrying a grudge against her father. However, even without her father's support, Zoe becomes a strong, independent woman. She's also dating Michael Swafford. Meanwhile, Rhea becomes addicted to substances just like her father. The two sisters are living two opposite lives. In a library, Zoe and Michael flirt around. Leaning for a kiss, Michael drops the pile of books that they gather. Upon picking up, Zoe tells Michael about the fate page. When a book falls, the page that it's opened up to can be read as a fortune and see how it can be applied to one's life. It is like a fortune-telling game she and Rhea used to play before. Zoe makes Michael try the fate page on a medical book. Although the statement is purely medical, the bottom line of the statement tells about the sacrifice of one to save everyone. Going back to Joe, who's still talking to his therapist, he shares that he's been given a job in a government funding facility. What's weird is he never applied, but the facility somehow got his name and hired him. Although weirded out, Joe still accepts the job. Later, Joe is awarded for being clean of any substance for one year. Joe remembers the time when he still had everything. A loving wife, two beautiful daughters, a dog, and a place he can call home. Afterward, Joe goes to see Zoe and tries to make it up with her. Joe tries his best to show her that he's changed and that with Zoe, they can help Rhea. However, Zoe is not yet ready. Joe insists to give her his gift, but Michael stands in between Joe and Zoe. Pissed, Joe suddenly punched and grabbed Michael by his neck. Zoe stops him, and even Joe is surprised by what he had just done. Later that night, Zoe tries to call Rhea, but she's not answering her phone. Zoe thinks her sister is using drugs again. Michael consoles her, and he reassures Zoe that he will never leave her. Joe also tries to reach Rhea, but he's also directed to voicemail. In a flashback, Heather asks Joe to promise her that he will be strong for their daughters. Joe says sorry to Heather for failing to keep his promise. 
he drinks alcohol again after one year of being sober. Unfortunately, he didn't notice that someone is hiding in the back seat. The man suddenly covers Joe's head with plastic and kidnaps him. The mad scientist finally reveals himself as Mike. It is then shown that something is injected into Joe's eye. Joe wakes up in the streets, weakened and confused about the voice he's hearing in his head. He then finds a mini briefcase with a gun inside. Mike clicks a key on his keyboard and Joe screams in pain. Mike explains that they implanted a device through Joe's optic nerve. It allows them to see what Joe sees and also makes Joe see what they want him to see. Mike makes Joe see Rhea buying some drugs. Mike also reveals to Joe that he's been watching his family for some time now. He then makes Joe see Zoe smoking while saying that his family is now broken because of him. He is playing with Joe's conscious in order to make Joe follow him. A woman named Sabi shows up and asks Joe what is happening. Joe tells her to call the police, but Mike blackmails Joe. He orders Joe to kill the woman or Rhea will be the one to die. With no other options, Joe picks up the gun and then pulls the trigger, but nothing happens. Mike tells Joe that he is Joe's higher power from now on. However, Sabi, who turns out to be an accomplice of Mike, tases Joe when he looks back at her. Meanwhile, it is seen that a dying star is indeed releasing a gamma ray burst in outer space. Sabi informs Mike that everything is ready. Joe, on the other hand, wakes up and finds himself trapped in a tight space. He tries to call 911, but the operator tells him that if he ever contacts the authorities again, they will kill his daughters. Finally agreeing to Mike's terms, Joe is released from the trunk of his car. Watching Joe through a drone, Mike orders Joe to go somewhere. The scene changes to Zoe watching a video of her and Rhea on her phone. She tries to call her sister again but fails once more. Going back to Joe, Mike orders him to enter the house of a man named Charles McGray. Reaching Charles's room, Mike orders Joe to threaten Charles to open his safe. Joe is still hesitant to follow Mike's every order. But Mike just makes Joe see a gun pointing at his daughter's head and Joe will have no choice but to obey him. Reaching the safe, Joe instructs Charles to authorize the laptop. Afterward, Joe is ordered to put his finger on the fingerprint scanner of the laptop. Data of Joe's DNA appears and the label written sequence compatible confirms that he is the one they are looking for. Even Charles cannot believe what he had just seen. Then, Joe puts a metallic LED device on the laptop. This allows Sabi to copy all the files on Charles's laptop. After getting what they need, Mike orders Joe to take out Charles. But Joe doesn't want to do such a thing. Distracted, Joe didn't notice that Charles already armed himself and knocks him down. Charles quickly picks up the gun. Joe reveals himself to Charles and tells him about the man that's giving him orders. Meanwhile, Charles cannot believe that his employee is the match. Charles then inspects Joe's eye where he sees the optic implant. Realizing that Mike can see and hear him, Charles says that they shut down the transfiguration project because it is too dangerous. Mike orders Joe to move forward, not knowing that Charles will be taken out by the drone. Finally, Joe is instructed to cut off Charles's thumb. Afterward, Joe goes to Redlock, the company he's working for. At the same time, the drone controlled by Sabi releases mini drones that make their way to attach to the building's vent system. As Joe puts on a mask, the drones release chemicals that kill everybody in the building that inhale it. Joe begs Mike to stop, but he just shows Joe that the same drone is in his daughter's room waiting to be activated if he fails to reach the main facility in four minutes. Joe immediately runs to the main facility as soon as he can. Grabbing a key card from security, the security who turns out to be alive manages to shoot his gun. Joe evades the shot, but it's too near to his ear that it messes up the audio feed from Mike. Luckily, the audio feed got reconnected in time for Joe to reach the main facility. He then uses Charles's thumb to give Mike and Sabi access to the core. Joe asks if his daughter is fine but Mike gives him one last order to secure his daughter's life. 
Joe is instructed to go inside the machine to turn on the throw switch. However, it is just a trap. As soon as Joe steps inside the machine, the door closes and the machine turns on. Joe asks why Mike is doing this. Mike simply tells him that it is in his DNA that he's the perfect subject. Mike also adds that when the universe decides what it wants, there is no point in resisting. With that, the transfiguration project commences. Joe's DNA starts to transform. Then, the procedure causes a big explosion in the building. The aftermath of the explosion is devastating while Mike is relaxing on violin music. The AI asks Mike if it's successful, to which the mad scientist says yes. Joe is alive and is currently ready for testing. Meanwhile, Michael is comforting Zoe, who's currently breaking down after watching the news about the explosion on Redlock. Zoe regrets that she didn't give his father a chance when he was still around. She also wishes that she never gave up on him. But as stated, Joe is still alive and wakes up in his home wrapped in a big foil bag. Joe asks what did Mike do to him. Instead of answering his question, Mike discusses about scientific things that Joe knows nothing about. Joe tries to call his daughter, but the phone is not working. Pissed, Joe releases an energy force that affects the electrical appliances around him. Lights start coming out of Joe's hand. He punches a wall in anger and he easily destroys the wall of his bathroom. Mike is amazed at what he's seeing. Mike explains that he transforms Joe's weakness into strength. His anger, fear, anxiety, and the overall chaos living in Joe's body are now the source of his infinite power. Mike adds that Joe can use his newfound powers to save his family's life. He then gives Joe a new mission. Having no other options, Joe just follows Mike's order. He immediately goes outside but finds his car missing. It is then revealed that Joe's power is electromagnetism. Joe manages to start a motorcycle by releasing some energy out of him. The angrier Joe is, the stronger he gets. Mike proceeds to explain that everything is just a matter of cause and effect as he plays with his pendulum. To test Joe, Mike orders him to confront a man named Nico Sola, the man responsible for Rhea's addiction and taking advantage of her. Meanwhile, Zoe sees the gift that Joe put in her bag earlier. Opening it, she sees the rock she gave him as a child, proving that Joe always loved her no matter what. The scene changes back to Joe reaching what seems to be a warehouse. Joe roams around until he finds a man and asks if he's Nico. Instead of answering, the man points his camera at Joe and flashes at his eyes, then runs away. Joe chases after him, but his unfamiliarity with the place gives Nico the advantage to ambush him. Nico ties Joe up and asks for his name. As Joe says his surname, Nico realizes that he is Rhea's father. Nico then smacks him and shows a videotape with the label Rhea. In the video, Rhea is drugged out and completely messed up while Nico is molesting her. Joe remembers the time when his sweet, innocent Rhea bakes a cake for him. Unable to keep his cool, Joe releases huge electromagnetic energy, but Mike's computer says that the massive energy failed and that more stress level is required. Going back to Joe, the place is burning due to the explosion. Nico stabs him, but Joe's body just absorbs the knife. Another man shoots at Joe, but the bullets just went through him. Joe then retaliates and pulls out the knife, stabbing the man that shot him. But the knife turned into energy as it goes through the man's neck. Meanwhile, Nico manages to get in his car before Joe catches up to him. It is because Joe stops to help a woman to get out of the warehouse. Nico plans to hit Joe, but Mike makes him see Rhea's video once more, causing Joe's anger to rise. This allows Joe to release another electromagnetic energy. But this time, in a concentrated area focusing on Nico's direction, Joe asks what is happening to him, but Mike just tells Joe that he fails again. He also says that police are coming and instructs Joe to turn himself in for him to reflect deeper within himself. But instead of following Mike, Joe tries to run. Unfortunately, the police still cornered and arrested him. After some time, Joe is interrogated about what he knows about the Redlock incident and other blasts that happened recently. 
Although Joe is telling the truth to the investigators, they do not believe him. They ask who Joe is working for, thinking that he is a terrorist. Mike orders Joe to say he's working for a higher power, which only makes Joe crazier in the eyes of the investigators. He is then instructed to say there is a bomb in the port. The police immediately make their way to the port. However, Mike tells Joe that if he got the bomb first, everybody lives. But if the police got to it first, around 20,000 people would die. Stressed, Joe bursts out once again but still fails to transform. He then immediately heads out to the port. Mike gives Joe a clue that the bomb is in a shipping crate. Meanwhile, Zoe watches on the news the hot pursuit of his father. Zoe cannot believe that Joe is still alive and that he's the one being blamed for the recent blasts. In the car, Joe's body begins glowing as he finally turns into pure energy, blasting his way around the city. The news catches the live shot of the light blasts inside Joe's vehicle. Mike is just chilling in his chair, watching Joe until his computer states that Joe's transformation finally stabilizes. Then, his men barge into Zoe's house. Michael can't do anything against the armed men as they kidnap him. Meanwhile, the police reach the port and they immediately search for the bomb. Joe, in his complete mass of energy form, also arrives at the port. He quickly makes every shipping crate levitate into the air. The explosion sets off in the air, but the impact throws other shipping crates around, causing one container to hit an airplane. The plane crashes into a railway. Fortunately, Joe manages to save both the plane and the train by using his electromagnetic energy. He stops the plane from crashing further while preventing the train from falling down the tracks. Afterward, Joe goes to Zoe's house but finds nothing but a laptop. Mike mocks Joe's cowardice. He then shows Joe that he has Zoe and Michael. Touching the laptop's screen, Joe manages to track where Mike and Zoe are and immediately goes into Mike's hideout. Arriving at the hideout of the man that put him into the suffering, Joe makes a shield around Zoe and Michael as he destroys the whole place. The security stares in horror as they see for the first time Joe's form. They try to take him down, but Joe easily disposes of them as he continues to wreak havoc in the place. Joe manifests an image of his former self as he talks to his daughter. He reassures Zoe that everything is fine and that they will go to get Rhea. Meanwhile, Michael looks at Joe in awe as if he saw a god. After some flashbacks, it is then revealed that the AI that Mike is talking to from the beginning is actually a video feed of Michael. Michael is the one who pushes Mike to pursue Transfiguration Project. The scene changes to outer space where the gamma ray burst is already on its way to the planet Earth. As the beam approaches the planet, Mike orders Michael to shoot Zoe. Angry, Joe blasts Michael off. He immediately attends to his daughter, assuring Zoe that they will go home. Unfortunately, Zoe passes away after asking for forgiveness from her father. Joe clings to her dead daughter while saying sorry over and over again. He remembers the last time he hugged Heather, Zoe, and Rhea all together. Mike finally stands up from his chair to watch Joe grieve for Zoe. To worsen the situation, Joe sees on a monitor that Mike's men barge into Rhea's apartment. They put the gun in her hand and then blow her head off, making it look like she commits suicide. Losing both Zoe and Rhea is the last straw for Joe. He completely loses it as everyone he loves is now gone. Joe bursts out as huge electromagnetic energy. It's so huge that he becomes the shield of the earth. Reaching omnipotence, Joe became a god of his own. And in his dying words, Mike submits to Joe while uttering the phrase, deliver us. In space, Joe protected the earth from the gamma ray burst from a dying star. Although he fails to protect his girls, Joe manages to protect mankind as he becomes its protector. But this doesn't stop Joe from fulfilling his promise to Heather. Using his omnipotence, Joe revives Zoe and Rhea. Zoe and Rhea wake up on the beach where their family used to go. The movie ends with Zoe whispering 143 and Joe saying it back as his energy embraces planet Earth.